I've been procrastinating about making this video because it's very complicated and it might be hard to get things across. But my recent videos on vinegar, glycine, and cancer all actually dovetail really nicely into this subject, as surprising as that might seem. Before I try and explain though, I'll show a clip where a researcher talks about some of the positive results on mitochondria in mice when they're doing fasted exercise as compared to fed exercise. After not eating breakfast or lunch, I seemed to run better. So we did a study in mice where we had them uh, do treadmill training, daily treadmill training for two months. Uh, and the animals were either maintained on alternate day fasting, which we abbreviate AF here, or ad-lib diet. And then at the end of the two months, we tested their endurance. And we also had control groups that didn't exercise. And we found that as expected, the animals that did treadmill training had better endurance than the sedentary animals. But we did find that the animals that were on alternate day fasting during the two months of training had significantly better endurance than the animals that were fed ad libitum during the training. And it, that's even though they had similar body weights. And as expected, their ketones are elevated, particularly in the animals that are exercising and fasting compared to the animals that are fasting alone or exercising alone. And finally, we took out soleus muscle tissue and found they have more mitochondrial DNA compared to nuclear DNA, which is an indicator of mitochondrial biogenesis. Natural eating patterns, which were intermittent feeding in experimental models seem to be good for the body and brain. Uh, ad libitum feeding is not so good. Unfortunately, we think these kids who are overeating, it's not good for their brain, and there's actually evidence for that. This is just one of at least 10, 15 published studies there's similar or even better results in humans. In one study, people who were on a keto diet were shown to have four times as many mitochondria and that the mitochondria were more functional as well. The reason this happens is that ATP generation is at the heart of every cell's life force. That's why you see many life extending compounds related to the Krebs cycle. In fact, pretty much all of them. Inamin, niacin, alpha-ketoglutarate, oxaloacetic acid, coenzyme Q10, and so on. In a few years, you'll also probably hear about acetate as a life extension compound as well. And there might be a few more in there that haven't been quote-unquote discovered yet. The other area you see compounds that extend life in animals is the ones that help clean up the mess of energy production. Glycine is a good example here. It can extend the lifespan of mice by a surprising amount due to being needed for ma mammals to create glutathione. Glutathione is critical because it cleans up the reactive oxygen species produced in energy production. Now from time to time I hear about the evils of deuterium because it messes up the mitochondria, but this stuff is measured in parts per million. When your mitochondria burn carbohydrates, you have as much as 3-4% to 4 of the oxygen produced in respiratory complex 1 revert to superoxide. This is highly reactive and will do things like bind to PUFAs to create mutagenic compounds. When you realize your mitochondria produce your own body weight in ATP every day, you can imagine this is a truly apocalyptic amount of free radicals being generated. <coughs> what you diddly doing, neighbor? I'm uh, putting speed holes in my car. Makes it go faster. Now, in spite of the endless misinformation, you always burn more fatty acids than carbohydrates, except in extreme physical exertion. But the sad truth is most people burn carbs exclusively in the area this damage is the most troubling. That's the brain. Most free fatty acids can't penetrate the blood-brain barrier, so unless you're fasting or on a keto diet, your brain will be burning carbs almost 100% of the time. Thankfully, when you do burn fatty acids or ketones, you skip this harmful step entirely and use beta-oxidation to turn fatty acids into acetate. 
This is used directly in the Krebs cycle, and this makes it the cleanest energy source possible. That's right, your body actually mainly is fueled by acetate, also known as vinegar. This form of fuel also skips even the beta oxidation steps and just goes directly into the mitochondria and forces them to burn fat. This is why when you supplement vinegar, you're going to be able to help repair some of these cells or else help force them into apoptosis if they're too far gone. And this could possibly have amazing benefits for your health. Now vegans will talk about the evils of methionine because glutathione is needed to detoxify this essential amino acid which is found mainly in meat. However, you have to have methionine to make pretty much any protein, so it's very important to have it and to have as much as possible. Now this can be taken care of by eating plenty of collagen, or better yet, taking glycine as a supplement. But the reality is that the amount needed for this purpose is nothing at all compared to the insane amount of free radicals produced by synthesizing your own body weight in ATP every single day, especially when you're eating a high carb diet. On the other hand, many carnivores will talk about the Randall cycle, but this is very outdated and came before we knew about things like glucagon and GLUT4 transporters. The idea here is that eating carbs and fat together is supposedly very bad, even though there's really no time where you would be eating carbs alone anyway, not in nature, not in a natural whole food. The reality is that when you eat, the body shunts glucose into the muscles instead of burning as much glucose. It's just a simple misunderstanding brought about by outdated information from the early 60s. Eating fat also doesn't raise your triglycerides for long periods anyway. What does that is excessive carb consumption. So if this were true, then you would constantly see this effect on a high carb diet. But it's really just a product of a bygone era when we knew a lot less about the human body. Any way you slice it, carbs cause a lot of damage at the cellular level. The worst diet for producing mitochondrial damage would actually be a high carb, high protein diet, which is what most bodybuilders and other fitness experts promote. Thankfully, you can undo the damage through fasting, which stimulates mitophagy and the creation of new, stronger mitochondria. You can also avoid the damage in the first place by lowering your carb consumption and increasing the intake of collagen and glycine. And I'd suggest that everybody just supplement glycine. Almost everybody today is deficient in glycine because the cuts of meat eaten and the methods of preparation simply don't provide enough. So supplementing is almost mandatory if you want good health. I'd say that's also true of taurine. I'll have to make a video about that at some time and discuss Pottinger's cats and stuff like that.